We had a lot of announcements today. Unless your name is Ron DeSantis, you probably have zero chance of beating Donald Trump for the Republican nomination. I mean, who are you kidding? Okay? And all of these candidates have one thing in common. They all seem to be telling themselves that if something, anything, melts down Trump's chances and they're probably rooting for an indictment, they'll be second in line in the polls. That is behind DeSantis, who, as good as he is, is far behind Trump. And that's it. I mean, none of these people have really any other lane. The establishment, Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, George W. Bush lane is closed for the most part. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some good people who might be trying to be VP or get a cabinet assignment. Okay, a book deal. And there are going to be some that just are the also rands who you'll forget in five minutes. But it seems that the only way to take down Trump is to try to out-Trump Trump, and that never works. Ask Marco Rubio. So it looks like what we're going to see is Republicans using both the swamp and, unfortunately, the left-wing Democrat media playbook against the guy who's 30 or so points ahead of his next nearest competitor, who's been described as everything you like about Trump and nothing you don't. That's Ron DeSantis again. But don't kid yourself. The media has already developed DeSantis derangement syndrome just in case. Now, look, I, I don't endorse candidates in the primary. Some of you get really angry at me for that. And I'll, I'll tell you why. People seem to want to be in a race to make their endorsement. They want to be out front, put their chips down, because there's something to being the first on board if the bets pay off. But that also leaves a lot of time between the endorsement and the end game, and a lot can happen over a year. If disaster strikes, you're tethered to it. Also, I'm not here to tell you how to vote or who to vote for. And look, I have friends and colleagues both here on Salem News Channel and over at my day job on Sirius XM Patriot who are fully comfortable doing just that, and that's fine. But okay, the field just got bigger. Christy. Mike Pence, Chris Christie, and the governor of North Dakota, Doug Burgum, are in. I, I, I didn't even know that Burgum had any intention, but that doesn't matter. But that makes three people now in the race who used to work for Trump. Race taken... A shot at trying to beat him. The problem is that what we are seeing is the beginnings of Republicans using the left's talking points against Trump. That's after being all about Trump. I mean, here's Mike Pence in the opening of his announcement. Now, now most Americans know me from my last assignment in the White House. What you may not know is I was also a congressman from Indiana for 12 years. I was a leader for House conservatives. We fought for life and liberty. I battled against big spenders in both political parties during those years, and most of them remember it. I was a governor in Indiana where we cut taxes, as you heard from Speaker Houston. We achieved record employment. We expanded educational choice, stood for the right to life and the freedom of religion. And as your vice president, I was proud to stand by President Donald Trump every single day when we made America great again. So there he is. He wants to step in, take credit, use the Trump name, say he was by Trump's side, sharing in the victories. But literally moments later, he takes on the biggest of all left-wing talking points that Trump tried to violate the Constitution on January 6th. January 6th was a tragic day in the life of our nation. But thanks to the courage of law enforcement... The violence was quelled, and we reconvened the Congress the very same day to complete the work of the American people under the Constitution of the United States. As I've said many times, on that fateful day, President Trump's words were reckless. They endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol. But the American people deserve to know 
that on that day, President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. Now voters will be faced with the same choice. I chose the Constitution, and I always will. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. And pretend that Democrats haven't questioned every single election, challenged every single election, that a Republican is won in the modern era, okay? To do so would be nonsense. What lane is he trying to occupy? The Liz Cheney lane? He literally in the same speech tried to gain credibility and trash Trump all at once. That's not going to win the MAGA crowd. No way. Then there's Chris Christie, the tub of melted ice cream from New Jersey, who went from Trump fanboy to George Stephanopoulos lapdog. Good evening. I I'm here tonight not only as the governor of New Jersey, but also as Donald Trump's friend for the last 14 years. We are about to be led by not only a strong leader, but by a caring, genuine, and decent person. I'm proud to say that the voice of the people of our nation is being heard in this hall tonight, and those voices want Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States. But everybody, this election is not just about Donald Trump. No, it's also about his Democratic opponent, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Okay, what lane is he trying to occupy other than shoving everybody out of the way? He's polling at a literal zero. 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 Okay? I, I can declare right now. <laughs> I can declare right now and have better polling than Chris Christie. But the media thinks Christie can use his Jersey boy attitude to damage Trump's hardened Queen's armor. Christie's got a different stage presence. Christie's got a different style. I don't know how it'll work, but if, and it's a huge if given the polling criteria that's going to be involved here, if Christie can make the debate stage, if Donald Trump shows up for it, and if Christie does what he's telegraphing, uh, as Shaq's reporting there, he's going to do, it could be a variable we haven't seen in 16. I don't know if it elevates Christie at all in terms of his standing, but could it land a punch against Trump that nobody in nearly a decade now of watching Trump interact with the Republican Party that nobody has managed to land? Trump is not Marco Rubio. Now, if that's all Christie's in for, then he should just hang that establishment swamp creature sign around his neck. Here he is announcing. There are not multiple lanes to the Republican nomination. That is a political science professor's dream. There is one lane to the Republican nomination, and he's in front of it. And if you want to win, you better go right through him. Because let me guarantee you something from knowing him for 22 years, everybody. He's going to try to go through me. And he's going to try to go through Ron and Nikki and Tim and anybody else who stands in his way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So... He's the guy. He's going to take down Trump. One more clip. The reason this is going to be different this time, sir, is because at least one of us is going to call him on the fact that eight years ago he stood on the stage in New Hampshire and said he was going to balance the budget in four years. And he left with the biggest deficit of any president in American history. He said he was going to eliminate the national debt in eight years. He added three trillion dollars to the national debt in four years. Uh, actually, those debts and deficits were higher under Bush and Obama. But what are you going to do? Remember, he had an establishment, House and Senate that wouldn't give him the budget that he requested. But all these guys that were once huge Trump fans are now trying to carve out a new lane by saying, I'm going to take him down with the left's own talking points. That ain't going to work. Not for you also, Rands. And that's my argument.